been described in two verses. He says that material nature has two features, namely the material cause and the efficient cause. The efficient causal activities are caused by Mahavishnu, and the material causal activities are caused by another form of Mahavishnu, known as Advaita. That Advaita, the superintendent of the cosmic manifestation, has descended in the form of Advaita Acharya to associate with Lord Chaitanya. When he is addressed as the servitor of Lord Chaitanya, his glories are magnified because unless one is invigorated by this mentality of servitorship, one cannot understand the mellows derived from devotional service to the Supreme Lord, Krishna. Text 1. Panditam Srimata Dvaita Charyamat Puta Cheshtitam Yasya Prashala Takyopi Tatsvarupam Nirupayet. I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Advaita Acharya, whose activities are all wonderful. By his mercy, even a foolish person can describe his characteristics. All glories to Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda. All glories to Advaita Acharya. And all glories to all the devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In five verses I have described the principle of Lord Nityananda. Then in the following two verses I describe the glories of, Sh of Sri Advaita Acharya. Mahavishnu Jagatkarta Mayaya Shri Chatiadaha Tasya Vatara Evayam Advaita Acharya Ishwaraha. Lord Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of Mahavishnu, whose main function is to create the cosmic world through the actions of Maya. Advaitam Harinatvaita Acharyam Bhakti Samsanat Bhaktavatarami Shantam Advaita Acharya Mashraye. Because he is non different from Hari, the Supreme Lord, he is called Advaita. And because he propagates the cult of devotion, he is called Acharya. He is the Lord and the incarnation of the Lord's devotee. Therefore, I take shelter of him. Sri Advaita Acharya is indeed directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. His glory is beyond the conception of ordinary living beings. Mahavishnu performs all the functions for the creation of the universes. Sri Advaita Acharya is his direct incarnation. That Purusha creates and maintains with his external energy. He creates innumerable universes in his pastimes. By his will, he manifests himself in unlimited forms in which he enters each and every universe. Sri Advaita Acharya is a plenary part of that Purusha and so is not different from him. Indeed, Sri Advaita Acharya is not separate, but is another form of that Purusha. He, Advaita Acharya, 
helps in the pastimes of the Purusha, with whose material energy and by whose will he creates innumerable universes. Being a reservoir of all auspicious attributes, Sri Advaita Acharya is all auspicious for the world. His characteristics, activities, and name are always auspicious. Sri Prabhupada's purple. Sri Advaita Prabhu, who is an incarnation of Mahavishnu, is an Acharya, or teacher. All his activities and all the other activities of Vishnu are auspicious. Anyone who can view the all auspiciousness in the pastimes of Lord Vishnu also becomes auspicious simultaneously. Therefore, since Lord Vishnu is the fountain head of auspiciousness, anyone who is attracted by the devotional service of Lord Vishnu can render the greatest service to human society. Rejected persons of the material world who refuse to understand pure devotional service as the eternal function of the living entities and as actual liberation of the living being from conditioned life become bereft of all devotional service because of their poor fund of knowledge. In the teachings of Advaita Prabhu, there is no question of fruitive activities or impersonal liberation. Bewildered by the spell of the material energy, however, persons who could not understand that Advaita Prabhu is non different from Vishnu wanted to follow him with their impersonal conceptions. The attempt of Advaita Prabhu to punish them is also auspicious. Lord Vishnu and his activities can bestow all good fortune directly and indirectly. In other words, being favored by Lord Vishnu and being punished by Lord Vishnu are one and the same because all the activities of Vishnu are absolute. <coughs> According to some, Mangala was another name of Advaita Prabhu. As the causal, causal incarnation or Lord Vishnu's incarnation for a particular occasion, he is the supply agent or ingredient in material nature. However, he is never to be considered material. All his activities are spiritual. Anyone who hears about and glorifies him becomes glorified himself. For such activities free one from all kinds of misfortune. One should not invest any material contamination or impersonalism in the Vishnu form. Everyone should try to understand the real identity of Lord Vishnu, for by such knowledge one can attain the highest stage of perfection. So Sri Advaita Acharya is especially important to all of us because it was due to his divine compassion that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared and distributed the holy name of Krishna in every town and village. He did it in India in his personal form and throughout the world through his pure devotees 
who serve him. Especially through his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, who is known as Senapati Bhakta or the commander in chief in the transcendental divine force of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to dispel the forces of Maya, the forces of illusion. Perhaps that's the most important attribute of Sri Advaita Acharya Prabhu, that he is responsible by his mercy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. Doya Koro Sita Pati, which has sunk, Doya Koro Sita Pati Advaita Goshai, Tava Kripa Pole Pai Chaitanya Nitai. We pray, we pray for the mercy of Sri Advaita Goshai, the husband of Sri Mati Sita Devi, Sita Pati. Tava Kripa Pole Pai Chaitanya Nitai. Because it was only due to your mercy, Sri Advaita Acharya Prabhu, that Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended to this world together with Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Sri Nityananda Prabhu came to assist Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in that sense, it was due to the prayers of Sri Advaita Acharya that Sri Chaitanya and also Sri Nityananda descended to this world to distribute the transcendental mercy of Krishna's holy name. And the description is given in different sections of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. How Sri Advaita Acharya wanted to spread the message of divine devotion among all kinds of people. But he saw that people were very much entangled in material activities, in all kinds of shapes. Some will be involved in very gross, sensual activities. Others will be worshipping, performing Vedic rituals with a mundane mentality, desiring attaining material perfection and elevation to higher material realms within the universe. Others will be performing all kinds of uh, tantric practices, rituals, to not tantric in the Vaishnava sense, because it is like deity worship is Vaishnava Tantra, and that's very much recommended, but uh, tantric practices to very much in the mode of ignorance, trying to achieve material enjoyment, trying to influence other people for their own personal purposes in terms of uh, gaining money, followers, fame, and so on. So Sri Advaita Acharya saw that all kinds of people were engaged in everything, all kinds of activities, but pure devotional service to the personality of Godhead. So, Advaita Chari was he intended to make them into devotees, but he saw there was there seemed to be no hope, and he decided that unless the Supreme Lord in person would descend and propagate the cult of devotion, there will not be a transformation within society. And therefore he started to worship the Lord by, he remembered a verse from a scripture that says that if one worships the Lord with Ganga Jal, with Ganges water, and Tulsi leaves with devotion, the Lord becomes very pleased. There is nothing else that pleases the Lord as much as a simple offering of Ganges water 
and Tulsi leaves offered with bhakti, with love and devotion. So then he started to worship the Lord in the form of Shalagram in this way. And he was calling to the Lord, calling him to descend. And the term uses humkar. Humkar means uh, crying out, shouting in a very strong voice calling the Lord, Hari, Hari, like shouting, the holy name Krishna, Govinda, Gopal, very, very loud. We can, uh, uh, I, I don't know what the neighbors, can we show? Can we? Yeah? They will not get upset? If it's not too long. If it's not too long. With the moderation. Hari! Hari! Not too long? Not too long. It's oh, not too long. Okay. Just for some time. <laughs> <laughs> Govinda. Govinda. Gopala. Gopala. Srimadur Sudana. Srimadur Sudana. Advita Chai was singing the Lord's holy names, calling him to please come. And in some, in some sections of the descriptions of the Leela, He's mentioned because Sri Advaita Charya is actually an incarnation of Mahavishnu, as we just read. And also he's an incarnation of Sada Shiva. Sada Shiva is the form of Lord Shiva in the spiritual world, which is actually, according to Brahma Samhita, Lord Mahavishnu's glance. You may have heard that uh, Mahavishnu impregnates material nature by glancing over over nature. <clears throat> and then, but Mahavishnu never touches material nature directly. When he touches material nature, he touches material nature through his form of Sada Shiva. And then he becomes transformed into Lord Shiva. So in, in that sense, he is Lord Vishnu, and at the same time, he is not Lord Vishnu, because he becomes involved with material nature in some way. He becomes the husband of material nature and therefore he is worshipped as Shiva and Parvati. Lord Shiva and Parvati Devi. The father and mother in, in this world. So, Lord Vishnu and also Lord Shiva, the Lord says, they have the spirit that these people are sleeping, these souls are sleeping for so long, and they don't seem to be willing to wake up. So basically he told the Lord, if you don't come and do something about it, I want to destroy the whole universe. Like as in the moment of annihilation, the universe is destroyed, and why it is destroyed? Basically, it is like a mother, when the child is crying, 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 the mother gets fed up and says, no, okay, to sleep. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Takes the child and puts the, pu puts the baby to sleep. <laughs> so similarly, when the conditioned souls are rotating, when they are rotating again and again through the material world, birth after birth after birth, finally it comes a time of annihilation. And then Mahavishnu withdraws the material universes, the, the universe center into his body, and in the form of Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva burns down to ashes the whole universe. So Sri Advaita Charya had this mood. And therefore he was crying out. He was crying out out of compassion on the one hand, and on the other hand, out of 
transcendental anger that if you don't come and want to do something here, this is not going to remain like this. So there was this double mood. This double mood is possible to coexist in the transcendental personality of Sri Advaita, because actually his name, Advaita, indicates non-dual. And the real meaning of non-duality is that the personality of Godhead is present and all the transcendental attributes can coexist even if from the material point of view it will be a contradiction. How somebody can be compassionate and angry at the same time? It's, it's not normal. Can you think of a, an angry person who is compassionate? But, but it seems he was... Um, the object was different. The object of the compassion are the poor souls and the anger is... How can you... Uh, the anger was towards the Lord. How can you tolerate them suffering? Well, that would be one way of understanding it. Also it can be understood that he was angry that you sleeping souls, fools, okay. why don't you wake up and serve the Lord? The Lord is waiting for you. You are missing all the nectar of devotional service. You fools, wake up. But, but because his mission, although his Vishnu Tattva, his mission was to invite Sri Krishna, Avatari, the source of all incarnations, to come and to personally perform his lila and to, to deliver the souls by personally acting as a pure devotee with the highest symptoms of divine love, the love of Srimati Radharani, and to manifest those pastimes for the transcendental pleasure of the whole universe. He is known as, Lord Chaitanya is known as Vishvamba. He is the deliverer or the sustainer of the universe. And he sustains the universe not with material force. The universes are sustained materially, the planets and so on. But actually, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sustenance of the universe is with pure love of God can. As a mother nourishes the child, the baby, with her milk, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself, with the divine love of the Supreme Mother, Srimati Radharani, Sri Prabhupada described Srimati Radharani in some occasions as the Universal Mother. But she's the universal mother, not in the material sense, like Durga. Mm -hmm. Durga Devi is providing the material necessities. And is also punishing the conditioned souls to help them wake up. But Srimati Radharani is the divine mother, the universal mother, giving bhakti, pure bhakti, shuddha bhakti. For, for the benefit of the conditioned souls. So Sri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself with the love of Srimati Radharani waking up all the sleeping souls. And all this took place by the divine mercy of Sri Advaita Acharya who appeared as a senior, as an elder in Chaitanya Lila. Sri Advaita Acharya and Sri Haridas Thakur are among the elders of Lord Chaitanya. Also Sri Jagannath Mishra, Lord Chaitanya's father, Sri Mati Sachi Devi, Sri Nilambar Chakravarti Thakur, uh, Lord Chaitanya's maternal grandfather. So many Elder personalities appear before Lord Chaitanya. And from those personalities, 
Sri Advaita Charya was the personality who directly invited the Lord to come. He was the, like when there is a deity installation, there is the, the Acharya, the Acharya who, Acharya meaning the, the Guru or the spiritual master, the senior Vaishnava who performs the ceremony, and there is one part of the ceremony is called Prana Pratishta, it's the installation, calling the Lord to descend and to enter into this world. So Sri Advaita Acharya performed the Prana Pratishta ceremony to call Lord Chaitanya to this world. And therefore we are especially indebted to, to him. Uh, there are three Prabhus, Supreme Prabhus, great masters to whom we are indebted. Sometimes they are described in, in Gaudiya Vaishnava literature as Tin Prabhu, the three Prabhus. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Nityananda Prabhu, and Sri Advaita Prabhu. All of them are Vishnu Tattva. They are, all of them are God himself in different expressions. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, Svayam Bhagavan, in his original form, with the sentiment, with the mood of Srimati Radharani. Sri Nityananda Prabhu is the first expansion of the Lord, Sri Baladev, and Sri Advaita Acharya is Mahavishnu Sadashiva. And when the Lord descends, actually he does it through the Purusha Vatalas, and therefore Sri Advaita Acharya, he is the Bhakta Avatara. He is the Avatara, he is the, in charge of the descending of all the different incarnations of the Lord. And therefore he plays the, the role of inviting Krishna in his personal form to descend to this world. And he also, he, when the Lila is finished, he tells the Lord, okay, now you can go back. There is a beautiful section, very esoteric section, of Chaitanya Charitamrita in we find it in Antia Vila at the end of the past times of the Lord where Sri Advaita Charya sends him a, a quote message to Lord Chaitanya telling him okay your mission is fulfilled now you can go back everybody has become mad Everybody has become mad now. He meant mad of love of Godhead, not mad like in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, <laughs> people become not only in, in in Amsterdam and from Spain in Mar Madrid also. Madrid actually the name Madrid. Get rid of the madness. <laughs> Madrid. <laughs> Krishna, that's why Maharaj will say that he came to preach there. He always will look at the etymology of the words. He will try to find some Krishna conscious meaning. <laughs> In Barcelona, there is the Ramblas. He will say, oh, this is Rambilas. <laughs> the Buddhists will do Harinam. Ramblas. It's the main pedestrian street in Barcelona. Rambilas. The Lila of Lord Ramachandra. And in Madrid, he will say, people here at are mad. Madrid, get free of the madness. <laughs> in Amsterdam, I don't know. Amsterdam. No, it's a dam. The holy dam of Lord Chaitanya. Give him mercy. Amsterdam. What means Amsterdam? What's the meaning? It's Any locals? A dam on the Amstel River, I think. Right. Amstel, a dam on the Amstel River. Dam meaning... Like yeah, or down, well, Rotterdam, yeah. Yeah. something to do with that river. Dam, you know what's a dam? Yeah. Dam so on the border, or, or like, situated on because the it's building and it's built on around the 
River. Under the sea, it's, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, they had to make dikes for the river. So, dam, dike. The for dam means dike will be like. Dike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. As one dam. Anyway, I do remember reading that when Sri Prabhupada came here in the was early seventies or late early seventies, the he saw people were so crazy. It was of course the time of the counterculture. People were so mad that Prabhupada said, "Not much philosophy here. Just Chandra Krishna and Prashadam." I don't know if it's still the same. Is it the same or no? People are more. Thoughtful or <laughs> <laughs> what? The, it's a joke. Eh? <laughs> City of sin. Hmm? City of sin. City of sin. Yeah, yeah but there's also no, many no, no. devotees. The station is better. Many intelligent uh, persons become devotees. Maybe not, you know, very minority, but still. Ah. Th they have T-shirts. Amsterdam. Damn, you know. Like that. Damn. <laughs> yes, but the station feels better. Because I went five years ago, I came at the station, I felt this weird energy and it's more white. Are they renovated the station? Ah, oh. maybe. Yeah. So you see some progress in the city. Yeah, because so much Harinam. Yeah, that really. must be. Yeah. Harinam and the Queen's Day, it's like a big celebration. <laughs> and Kadamakarana Maharaj brings the buses from all over Europe to counteract <laughs> the <laughs> to madness of, <laughs> of the town. But anyway, no, in Kali Yuga, every big city is more or less crazy. And we were discussing last night in Utrecht that actually, more or less, we are all crazy, I mean, okay. And Harmut Prashant Maharaj recently was uh, m mentioning how actually if we diminish the percentage of madness, then we're doing pretty good. Because the condition is always crazy. Trying to enjoy uh, ma the material objects as the goal of life, this is actually madness. It's madness. Isn't it? We, we try to squeeze ananda, divine happiness, happiness from places where there is not. Only mad people can do like that. And therefore there are so many kinds of mental illnesses that are there, all kinds of diagnoses, from all, all kinds. I mean, there's a very broad range of of madness. But also, there is divine madness, and this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach. And actually in this uh, final lila, it's the, the, the Baula section, some Sahajas are also named Baula. Sahajas meaning in India there are uh, different groups Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and just one second. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur identify about 13 groups of materialistic devotees who engage in material activities on the name of divine, divine experience and they warn us not to do the same, to be careful, 
but still the term baula, the original term baula, which uh, later on degenerated in, in India, uh, that term is used in Chaitanya Charitamrita by Krishna Ras Kaviraj Goswami. I'll read this section. It's a very beautiful section, actually. So it's somewhat confidential, but basically it shows how, like, Sri Advaita Charya invited the Lord to come, and then Sri Advaita Charya, when the Lord's mission was fulfilled, requested to present the Lord, no, as you wish, you can go back if you like. You don't have to stay any longer. So this happened uh, when Jagadananda Pandit, one of Lord Chaitanya's uh, close associates, went to Navadvip and met Srimati Sachidevi and also he met Sri Advaita Acharya. And Sri Advaita Acharya sent a message to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was in Jagannath Puri performing his Lila of chanting the holy name of the Lord uh, with great transcendental emotion in the association of his associates in Puri. Jagatananda Pandit thus went to Nadia and when he met Sachimata, he conveyed to her all the Lord's salutations. So he brought messages back and forth. He then met all the other devotees headed by Advaita Acharya and gave them the prasadam of Jagannath. After staying for one month, he took permission for, from Mother Sachi to leave. When he went to Advaita Acharya and also asked his permission to return, Advaita Prabhu gave him a message to deliver to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Advaita Acharya had written a sonnet in equivocal language with an import that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could understand, but others could not. In his sonnet, Advaita Prabhu first offered his obeisances hundreds and thousands of times unto the lotus feet of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He then submitted the following statement at his lotus feet. And this is the, the, it's called the sonnet, the, the, the crazy, the sonnet, the song of the crazy, the baula. Baula ke kahi kalo ka hai la baula, baula ke kahi kahate navi kaya chaula. Please inform Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is acting like a madman, that everyone else, that everyone here, has become mad like him. Inform him also that in the marketplace, rice is no longer in demand. <laughs> Financial crisis. Nobody is buying anymore. Finish. So it means everybody was, was full and no, no more rice and no more, don't give me more. We are satisfied. <clears throat> and then continues. Baula ke kohi ka kaye na hi ka aula, Baula ke ka hi ka iha, kohi yache baula. Further tell him that those no mad in ecstatic love are no longer interested in the material world. Also tell Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that one who has also become a madman in ecstatic love has spoken these words. So this was Sri Advaita Acharya. So he said he was also a madman. 
When he heard Advaita Acharya's statement, Jagadananda Pandit began to laugh. And when he returned to Jagannath Puri, Nila Chal, he informed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu of everything. After hearing the equivocal sonnet by Advaita Acharya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quietly smiled. That is his order, he said. Then he fell silent. Although he knew the secret, Swarup Damodar Goswami, Lord Chaitanya's personal secretary, inquired from the Lord, what is the meaning of this sonnet? I could not understand it. But he, he actually got it, but he pretended not to understand. He wanted to see what the Lord would say. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Advaita Chari is a great worshipper of the Lord and is very expert in the regulative principles enjoined in the Vedic scriptures. Advaita Acharya invites the Lord to come and be worshipped. And to perform the worship, he keeps the deity for some time. After the worship is completed, he sends the deity somewhere else. I do not know the meaning of this sonnet, nor do I know what is in Advaita Prabhu's mind. Advaita Acharya is a great mystic. No one can understand him. He is expert in writing sonnets that even I myself cannot understand. Hearing this, all the devotees were astonished, especially Svaruk Tamula, who became somewhat morose because he saw it, the, the Lord's Lila is coming to an end. So then he became morose. From that day on, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's emotional state changed, changed markedly. His feelings of separation from Krishna doubled in intensity. As his feelings of separation in ecstasy, in the ecstasy of Srimati Radharani, increased at every moment, the Lord's activities both day and night, were no wild, insane performances. So we see how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was obeying to the orders of Sri Advaita Prabhu. Sri Advaita Prabhu plays the role of the superior of the Lord, and yet is his subordinate devotee who comes, God himself as devotee, who comes to prepare the environment, everything, for the Supreme Lord in his personal Svayam Bhagavan form coming to perform his divine mission. So we are very indebted to Sri Advaita Acharya and we can take the opportunity to pray, especially today, every day we can pray to him, but especially today, his appearance day, pray for his mercy so that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will become fully manifest within our hearts by his hunkar, by his strong calls of compassion and also anger against our <coughs> nonsense. He's calling the Lord. So we can pray to him, please uh, invite the Lord to enter into my heart and to dispel all ignorance, all mundane madness and establish divine madness within the heart. Comments or questions? One question. Um, can you explain the... Ex I mean, you already uh, mentioned about Lord Shiva uh, and uh, Sadashiva, how they are different. But then there is something called as Shiva Tattva, which is, I believe, Lord Shiva. And as you mentioned, um, Advaita Acharya is Vishnu Tattva. So what is this difference? I mean, 
Yes, Srila Prabhupada explains in, if I remember correctly, it's in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it's in one of his, of, of his Bhaktivedanta purpose, that Shiva Tattva is actually, it's an, in a spe, it is a special Tattva in between Vishnu Tattva and Jiva Tattva. So Vishnu Tattva is God with all his attributes, and Jiva Tattva is separated Vibhinamsha, separated expansions of God. So Shiva Tattva is not a separated expansion and it's not exactly Vishnu Tattva, God with all his attributes, separated from material nature. It is a special Tattva in the middle of the two. And therefore sometimes in Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition it is, I, have, I don't have the exact reference, but it is quote sometimes uh, by preachers that there are three tattvas which are very difficult to understand. And these are Jiva tattva, Shiva tattva, and Guru tattva. Because they are, they are very, very confidential and in one way complex, particularly for the for the human mind. If we try to understand through philosophy, it is not possible. But what we can do is to, by looking to, or by hearing with attention what the scriptures say, at least we can get an appreciation of what it is about. In this case, the Shiva Tattva. So it is actually, Brahma Samhita describes it's Vish, Lord Vishnu's glance. So in that sense, Sada Shiva is the glance of Lord Vishnu. In that sense, there is no difference between Vishnu and Shiva, Sada Shiva, because Lord Vishnu and his glance are not different. But then when touches material nature, and becomes more involved as the, as the principle, the Shambhu principle, the gen, generational, the generative principle of creation, and becomes the father of the living beings, Shiva and Parvati, father and mother. In that sense, there is an involvement, uh, there is some, a difference from Vishnu in that he touches, he gets involved with material nature and he rules over the ahankara, or the false ego of the living beings. So it's, a, but as, as we said, it's, it's difficult to, to fully grasp. We are small jivas, our jiva can understand higher tattvas, unless the Lord reveals in as much as the Lord reveals, then we can understand. But we can at least appreciate what the scriptures say about Tattva. Uh, Shekhar, in the Avasampadayas, and uh, uh, is it correct? Uh, and also the statement you made about Amsterdam, Srila Prabhupada's taxation of the situation, which is. So, is it. Um, I don't know if this Apna Sampada also have to do always with uh, devotional service combined with uh, sense gratification. But it seems Srila Prabhupada, uh, he, he then uh, observed it. And it, I was just wondering if we preach in such places like any city, as you mentioned, not only Amsterdam, um, so how can we s stay free from the contamination? Yeah, yeah I mean, the, the worst thing is, is not. Of course, it's not good that the devotional service mixed with sensitivation. It is not good. That's what it is called Mishra Bhakti or mixed devotional service. In the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Kapila speaks about that, or different types of mixers in devotional service. But the worst thing of the Apa Sampradaya is that there is philosophical and theological justification for that. This is what it makes it worse. 
if somebody is affected by Maya, but acknowledges I am affected, affected by Maya, and takes a humble attitude, like, and wants to rectify that, that's a, that's, that's a good attitude. Not to be affected by Maya, but to be willing to correct that. At least there is recognition of where we are at. But if, but if I am affected by Maya, and at the same time I pretend to be, to be in the intimate circle of Krishna's associates, like the gopis, that's actually a great insult and a great offense to the Lord and his eternal associates in the spiritual world. So, so Apa Sampradaya is very much concerned with the deviation, the, the philosophical and theological deviation, and the justification of improper attitude and behavior. At, at least we should acknowledge when we have improper attitude, we should acknowledge, I need to correct this. Then there is hope to uh, get out of that entanglement. But if, if we do not acknowledge, and not only that, but we try to justify it by creating a philosophy, and we propagate such philosophy, it is actually a great disservice to humanity. Because we are uh, taking people to lower regions of consciousness, to hellish dimensions of consciousness. So therefore, our charges were very strong against Apa Sampradaya. Because of the great harm that uh, creates for a human society. Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatra Didim Vina Aikantiki Harer Paktir Utpatayaiva Kalpate. Devotional service which does not follow scripture, Shruti Smriti Purana, it's actually a great disturbance in human society. So, uh, this is quite pertinent to the situation in, in Holland. Many devotees. Um, um, the, no, not many, but uh, there are some devotees who strongly advertise we should also talk about and chant Shimati Radharani's name. Uh, not, not talk about Shimati Radharani and, and chant her name. And, and maybe they. Um, but, but they don't back it up. So, I mean, or Srila Prabhupada, he, he. I don't know. Well, I mean, Srila Prabhupada did refer to the Prajavasis. For example, in his book, Elevation to Krishna Consciousness, he will refer to the Prajavasis that uh, in Vrindavan devotees sing more the name of Radha, Radhe Radhe, uh, to call out for her mercy because they know that if Srimati Radharani recommends a devotee, it doesn't matter how foolish that devotee is and that devotee will have access to, to him, to Krishna. Krishna will accept. And in some of his lectures, Prabhupada will explain that. On the other hand, we should chant Srimati Radharani's name, especially as Srila Prabhupada taught us to chant it. And that's in, through the Hare Krishna Mahamanta. Hare Srimati Radharani will call out to Krishna. Uh, Krishna, Rama is another of Krishna's name. Radha, Ram, Radha Ramana, Ramana, Radha Ramana, Hari Govinda, Jai Jai. So, the, uh, so we, we call out to Krishna and Krishna's names by calling out first to Srimati Radharani, Hare Krishna. So first Radharani, Radha Krishna. But, but we shouldn't invent ways of doing it. It is, it is more safe to follow the ways taught by the Founder Acharya. 
That's not to say that there is no place sometimes. Like Prabhupada also will sing bhajans, there are some bhajans. Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan. So we can sing those bhajans, that's very, uh, very uplifting. But we don't need not to chant Radhe, 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 and Namahamanta Hare Krishna. What do they? So we should uh, especially chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Yeah, I'm just going to take it down a couple of notches, a little bit <laughs> less complicated for me. Um, I'm getting confused with the word Tattva. Tattva, I understood meant truth. Yes. And um, the confusion is the first time I uh, heard the word was with the Pancha Tattva. And... Uh, We've spoken today. You spoke about three of them. Why are they all together? Like the, it's like for me, it seems like it's a team, that, uh, a team of people that were on Earth at the same time, like the six Goswamis. But is that a mistake or not? No, I mean it's Pancha Tattva. It's the truth in five. Five, yeah. Prabhupada will say the truth in five features. Uh, the supreme truth in five features. Uh, that in in Sanskrit. Uh, you may remember from Bhagavad Gita there is uh, in chapter 17 the invocation for the Supreme Truth it is done in, in, in the uh, in the essential transcendental words Om Tat Sat Om Tat Sat that's the way of calling out to the Supreme Truth Tat, that means literally means that that that, that literally means that, but means that not in the sense, in the in the ordinary sense, it would say it would say give me that, not in that sense, that like an ordinary object, but that in the essential sense, meaning the real substance. What is the real substance? That, which has reality. And that va, uh, the, the literal translation of that va will be that ness. That ness. N E W S. Yeah. Which basically means the uh, essential nature of the, of the truth, of the substance. We were discussing. Two days ago at the college, at Buckley and the College in other days, there was a course about one, one session on educational studies. One of the degrees we offer is on education. And we were looking into the origin of the universities. And, and in one part of the discussion came out that the values of the university of the university is a place where there is a search of, for truth. But the real truth is actually is God. Tattva. So, Pancha Tattva means the truth, the God, in five features. And were they on earth together? As a team kind of thing? Or why do we worship them together? Like the six Goswamis also together? Why do we worship them well, together? Well, kind of, yeah. Because I they are a team, yeah. They so are a team, they were. Right. And when they are speak, the best team in, a, in a spreading a, a pure love of Godhead. Okay, so when you... Uh, see, the, the, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the Lila, there is a section, actually in chapter 7, the chapter we read today was from chapter 6, The Glories of Advaita Charya, and chapter 7 is entitled Lord Chaitanya in Five Features. And the description is given that the Pancha Tattva, they were dancing, singing and dancing the holy names of the Lord together as a team. And they will distribute the love of Godhead without discrimination. They didn't consider who was Qualified, who was not qualified. Who was worthy, who was unworthy. They didn't care. They will give it to everybody. Okay. So the Shiva Tattva and Jiva Tattva, that's not more personalities, it just means a specific type of truth. 
Yes, this is actually it's God's energy, Krishna's energy. So, for example, it, it, Panchatattva means Shri, Shri Shri Radha Krishna, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Shri Krishna as a devotee, as a pure devotee in the higher expression as Shri Mati Radharani. Then, the expansions of God as a devotee, Shri Balaram is the first devotee, because basically what, what he's revealing, as we read also in the beginning, Sri Advaita Chari was revealing that the real spiritual experience becomes magnified through service. Even God himself enjoys that transcendental mellow of serving. So Sri Nityananda Prabhu is God, the expansion of God as a devotee. Sri Advaita Charya is the incarnations of God, Avatara, Bhakta Avatara, as a devotee. Sri Gadala is the Shaktis, the energies of God, Bhakti Shakti, Bhakti Shakti Kam, as a devotee. And, and Sri Vas Thakur is the Jiva Tattva in its, its purest or their purest expression. And therefore, he's described as an incarnation of Sri Narada Muni, who is empowered with divine bhakti. When the jiva becomes absorbed in divine service, becomes actually is following the path of Narada Muni. We belong to the same disciple succession, Brahma Narada. So, and they work as a team. So it's God in all. In, in all his expressions as a pure devotee. Is that oh, okay? Thank you. Oh yes, sorry, one more. Purusha, what does that word mean? Because you mentioned it in the very beginning of the class. Purusha actually means person, but there is the uh, Purusha refers to the soul, but uh, here is when in this term Purusha refers to the Parama Purusha or the Supreme Purusha, the Purusha Avataras. Mahavishnu is the big person, the big Purusha. Also Purusha means enjoyer. Because person means enjoyer. And we are meant to enjoy. But to enjoy properly to enjoy properly, we need to connect with the supreme enjoyer. Then we can enjoy properly. If we don't connect to Krishna, to the supreme enjoyer, we are deprived also of our essential enjoy capacity to enjoy. Because we enjoy through supplying enjoyment to the supreme enjoyer. That's our nature. Like the finger enjoys the food or the result of the food by supplying the food to the whole body. And then the energy comes back to the finger. If the finger tries to enjoy separately from the body, then it becomes very tired. And even if it's totally separated from the body, it stops being a finger, becomes rotten. So our our divine nature of divine enjoyment becomes covered when we don't serve the supreme enjoyer through pure devotional service. Wow, it's 9.20. We said nine okay, it's fasting, so I guess it's... So I guess we'll stop, okay, last um, point. Uh, Narad Muni, it is uh, not a position like Brahma, or it is a, it's an eternal, this thing, right? He, if he has an eternal position as Narada Muni? Yeah. Yeah, he celebrated soul, Sita. So he's, although he's described as Satana Sita, we see from scriptures, how in previous life he was engaged differently as a Gandharva in the heavenly planets, then as the son of a maid servant. And then he became 
the great sage Narada Muni. But no as the great sage Narada Muni, he is eternally perfect, he is no Nitya Sita. So uh, it's not like we always hear uh, Lord Brahma or for that matter any other demigods, Indra and their positions. A uh, living entity, Jiva, uh, depends on how many pious deeds uh, that soul does, he can get to that position of Brahma or Indra. But similarly one, it's not like that. Another one is not a position, it's a personality. Although there is no reason why the Lord cannot have similar devotees, similar sages. Like for example, we read that Narada Muni travels with a, he has a very good, good friend, Parvata Muni, who travels with him. So, we can also, if you feel attracted to become uh, Narada Muni, <laughs> it is no, uh, it is not like, like in, in, in the professional world, there are oppositions, you call oppositions? In, in, I know the Spanish term, I don't know in English. Oppositions means that there is, there are, for example, five, five positions and there are uh, 10,000 people applying for the position. And they do exams. Oppositions, they call? Competitors, maybe. No, but you mean there's a limited amount of places to be called? In, a, in a Spain, they call it oppositiones. Yeah. Opposition, it means... Selection. Actually, opposition means to oppose somebody. Because there are so many uh -huh. that you have to compete to get the post. So they do an examination, and the five people who get the highest marks, those get the position. Familiar with the so it is not that, okay, <laughs> not the money, there is no place for you, you cannot do like him. You, can, you cannot be exactly not the money, we follow his footsteps, but you can do as he does, no problem, he's a charia. So we can sing the glories of the Lord wherever we go, this is what he teaches what to do. Can I please ask for that? <laughs> one, one little question. Okay. It's, it's, I had Mark and Day on the phone last week and I had a hard week and he told me, yeah, people who chant the Maha Mantra, they have all these obstacles. People who are with Krishna, they get all these obstacles in the material world. And he told me, people who chant uh, Om Vishnu or Ganesha or something like this, or they follow Vishnu, Shiva, they, they have nice life. And I was like, okay, I do Om Vishnu, uh, no, Om Shivaya Namaha. And I did Om uh, Ganesha, Om Ganga Nupataye Namaha. And I was like, oh, maybe then the block, blockings go away. But is this okay to do when you are with Krishna or is this not good? No, it's better. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's better. Sometimes people argue like that. And in India that's quite common. People say, Krishna, Krishna is very crooked. You don't know. Krishna, Krishna sometimes he gives, sometimes he steals. Like he was stealing butter from the gopis. So sometimes people are scared, in India particularly, <laughs> scared of Krishna, what Krishna, uh, he's very naughty, what he's going to do to me. And Lord Shiva, they say, okay, play safe, worship Lord Shiva, you will get money. Because Lord Shiva is known as Ashutosh. Ashutosh means he's very easily pleased, also means he's very easily displeased, so one should be careful yeah. also. So, so, so people think, if I worship Lord Shiva or Ganesh, then I will, I will have a better material position. Yes. But actually, uh, the material position, that's actually a patchwork. By trying to get a good material position, we are not really solving the problems of life. Because Krishna has certified in Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada says, he uses that expression, Krishna certified. <coughs> the material world is by nature a place of suffering. Yes. So even if we worship whoever, whatever, whoever the enemy gods, we get some temporary benefit, but then we have to die. Suffering will be there, it's unavoidable. And, and, it, and it is a misconception, sometimes uh, 
uh, the misconception has spread that Krishna will not take care of you as well as Lord Shiva. But that's not true. <laughs> Lord Shiva is Krishna's bhakta. Vaishnavanam Yatta Shambhu, the Bhagavatam says. <coughs> and Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says, Anandas Chintayantomam, Yechana Paripasate, Teshamriti Abhijuktanam, Yoga Kshema Bahamiyaham. It means to those who worship me without any other loyalties, Ananya, Ananya's Chinta, no other loyalties. Don't say, okay, Krishna is not giving me what I have. Just in case Krishna fails, start singing Om Namah Shivaya or no, Om Manapati Anamaha. No, that, that's not it. It's served as the servant. So I think <coughs> if I, it, it's maybe grace of Shiva is, is other, why is, is different than grace from Krishna. And because he's devotee of Krishna, I thought, yeah, it's maybe okay then to do uh, greetings to Shiva. Yeah, if we want to pray to Lord Shiva, we should pray to him for bhakti, for devotion. For the, okay. Not for material things. Yeah. I mean, that's the best attitude. Some know it's becoming fashionable that people mix everything up and so on. But Srila Prabhupada, our founder Acharya, would not recommend such approach. Even devotees, even the worship of Ganapati or for Lord Ganesh, is uh, recommended in Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, to destroy obstacles in Bhakti. But because Prabhupada knew the mentality of people in India and, and, and people of Kali Yuga, he said he didn't emphasize Ganesh worship, even though it's written in Nectar of Devotion. But he told disciples, if you want to worship Ganesh, you should give as a donation, because he knew Ganesh gives lots of money. You should give what's a big amount. I forgot if it was ten thousand or hundred thousand dollars every month. Oh, every month. Every month. <laughs> every month. Said, because he because he knew these people they want to start worship Ganesh, they will get money and they will forget Krishna. So Prabhupada said the rule is if you worship Ganesh, you have to give this amount every month. That's the yes. price. But, yeah, thank you very much. And you answered my question because I did it to remove obstacles for Bhakti. So if, you, if, you, if we pray to remove obstacles for Bhakti, that's different. That's, that's fine. And the Singha there is also a deity for that? It's a it's it's an expansion of normal Singha, that's why. We yes, Prabhupada Singhadev describes him as a devotee of Lord Nrsinghadev. Yeah. So Srila Baba said we can also turn to Lord Nrsinghadev to remove obstacles on the path of Prabhupada. Yes, yeah. yes. So, but, the, but in the, when, we, when we take shelter of Krishna for whatever we, in whatever uh, problem we, we are facing, Krishna will give us what we need. If we need something, he will give. If, if something is, is harmful, he will not give it. So Krishna will discriminate. He will say, no, I will not give, if I give money to this fellow, this fellow will forget me, so I will not give him any money because he will get in, in trouble with money. So not what we want, but what we need. Yeah, what, exactly, exactly. He will answer to our prayers, but with, with great care and love, for our own be benefit. If he sees that we can manage, we can have money and not get intoxicated by the money, then he will give money, no problem. In Srimad Bhagavatam I read that sometimes Krishna fulfills desires and then after some time takes that away again. Also. <laughs> he fulfills desires and then? And then afterwards takes it back. Uh, <laughs> that's up to him, yeah, that's, he's the boss. <laughs> if we should... We, we shouldn't be scared about that because he's the boss. So, meaning, and he's the good boss. It's not that like we hear boss is scary. Even sometimes we compare uh, uh, Krishna as the supreme father. In Kali Yuga, many times the fathers don't do their job very well. So we say, oh, the father is feels like my father. <laughs> 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 
So, but but he's the he's the best the, the best boss, the best father. He's concerned with our welfare, always. Okay, so we will continue at eleven with the seminar. Thank you very much for your participation and for giving me this opportunity. Hare Krishna. Shri Adrita Tarya Prabhuki. Shri Adrita Pimpava Mahotkava Ki. Shri Shri Gaurani Tai Ki. Shri La Prabhupada Ki. Sama Veta Gaur Patta Vrinda Ki. Nittai Gaur Premanande. Shri Adrita Namaste.